Thank you so much for being on the programme. Pleasure. Now, I know you want to use this interview as an opportunity to tell the audience and tell MPs, frankly, how brilliant the Rwanda bill is. So let's do that first, shall we? So why do you think the Rwanda bill is the right thing to do? Well, look, we've made very clear commitments about delivering the partnership with Rwanda. We've seen various legal challenges and legal difficulties in getting on and doing that. But it's absolutely crucial to putting out of business the evil criminal gangs responsible for smuggling people over the channel. So there's a sort of imperative here to save lives at sea, as well as the efforts and part of the wider package of responding to those enormous costs that we're seeing in the asylum system every day that run at around £8 million. Now, we've made some real progress in terms of the number of crossings down by a third this year relative to last. We've seen the number of arrivals from Albania reduced by 90%. But we need to build on that, that progress that we've made. We think that this bill will help us to do that, to help bring that partnership with Rwanda to life and begin those relocations to that country that mean that we can achieve the objectives that I've just touched on. So that's the pitch. That's what you believe. Not everyone's convinced, including the guy who was, until last week, in your job, uh, Robert Jenrick, the former immigration minister. How's the pitch going down with MPs now? So the bottom line here is that the bill closes off so many of those avenues of concern. I'm not asking about the of merits concern. of the bill. You, you, well, just, you just said what the merits of the bill are. How confident are you that MPs are going to vote for it? How's it going down with Conservative MPs? I think that Conservative MPs as a whole want to put a stop to these channel crossings. There is a unity of purpose around the need to take action to address this. We will, of course, as ministers, engage during the course of the debates that we will have on this over the coming weeks about the detail. That is what happens in the process of any piece of legislation coming forward. So just, but, just to know, jump in, um, what you're saying then is, look, if you want to stop the votes, vote for it as second reading, i.e. tomorrow, and then we can work out some of the details, we'll take amendments, we'll do all the other things later on. Is that the idea? We think that the package of measures in the bill as presented do what is necessary to be able to enact this partnership with Rwanda. Yeah, but that's I think it's really question. no Are you basically well, saying, well, hang on. back it tomorrow so, and then you can amend it later? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is we think the package of measures is right. It's interesting that people like Lord Sumption, Lord Wolfson, Geoffrey Cox I see today has come out and said that he thinks that this is what is necessary in order to deliver on this. But we will, of course, engage with colleagues during the passage of the legislation. That is what happens during the course of any bill, as you know. And we are committed to doing that, and that is something that we will do over the course of the coming weeks. How does that square with the fact that Rishi Sunak says that you can't go any further on Rwanda, this is as far as you're allowed to go? It is undoubtedly the case that in order for this to be compliant with our international um, obligations, the bill as presented does that. And there is also undoubtedly this risk um, and the Rwandans have been very clear with us in saying that we cannot be in breach of our international obligations. That would collapse the partnership as a whole, and so you could potentially then have a piece of legislation that seeks to do something that can't actually be done in reality because the partnership that you were trying to enact has fallen away. That would seem to me to be an absurd place to get to. So it feels to me what you're saying that you're not going to be able to go as far as many of your MPs want. I mean, look, the ERG, the European Research Group, for example, Marc Francois, the chairman, says... He wants you to rip up it up and start again. The legislation's got so many holes in it that he wants you to pull the bill and put forward a completely revised version. You're saying that that's just not... It's oh, not possible to revise it that much. I think that pulling back from this piece of legislation tomorrow would be the wrong thing to do. We've got a bill here that we genuinely believe, and others have come out and said so, will get us to a place that we need to be in in order to bring about this partnership with Rwanda. I think that the public are getting so frustrated and so tired with this that they want to see progress made. The PM has made promises, he's made commitments. I think it's really refreshing that he's been very clear and placed such an emphasis on this and come up with a credible plan to help deliver it. He should be commended for that and I'm determined to work with him and with other ministers in government and with colleagues to make sure that we land this legislation because it's mission critical and the public expect action. You say it would be the wrong thing to do to pull the bill tomorrow. Can you rule out pulling the bill? There are no plans to pull the bill tomorrow. But that's, and the that's fact very, is, that's, that the is fact interesting, because that, to we, me, we have a I'll be honest, reading. That, listening to this from a journalistic perspective, to me, that sounds like you're not ruling out pulling the bill. You asked me a direct question. I gave you a direct answer. It was second really, though, was no, it? it was. We have second reading of this legislation tomorrow, and what I want to see is Conservative MPs back in this bill in this second reading debate. And also, I'd like to see MPs from other parties support this bill, because it's not good enough 
the Labour Party's position of complaining about everything we take forward and offering no credible alternative just isn't good enough. The public wants to see action on this. The measures that we've introduced to date have delivered progress, but we need to continue on this journey in order to get to where we need to get to and shut these channel crossings down. So just, just to be really clear, can you rule out pulling the bill tomorrow? We are not pulling the bill tomorrow. OK. We're having second reading of this legislation and I hope that Parliament will come round and give it that second reading. OK. Um, is it true, as Sam Coates has been uh, reporting, our Deputy Political Editor, that some Conservative MPs have been threatened with an early election if they don't back the bill? I'm not aware of any such um, suggestion to Conservative colleagues. The fact is, we made promises. The PM came forward and said this was part of the five-point plan to stop the boats. We've got a vehicle here to take that forward, to deliver on that promise. I actually think voters want to see us deliver on that. I think when it comes to an election, a lot of people out there in the country will cast their votes based on us taking action on it. So it seems to me that we would want to make sure that we are making the progress as part of our pitch to the country when the election comes in due course. Uh, today of all days, Richard Sunak's put up the COVID inquiry uh, from 10.30, he's only uh, just you know, 5 p.m. I should get out. How would you describe the Prime Minister's mood? So you will appreciate that I've been spending a lot of time today in meetings as a brand new minister in the department getting briefed up. We've got Home Affairs Select Committee appearance. We've got the consideration of the bill tomorrow. I think that, um, you know, we have been clear as a government that the COVID inquiry is a really important means by learning the lessons of what happened. I know that um, ministers who've been appearing and former ministers who've been appearing have been going and um, taking part in that in the way that all of us, I think, would want to see, being candid with the inquiry. That's precisely what um, the Prime Minister has been doing. And what we want to see is proper learning come out of this process, because that is absolutely critical for preparedness for any future pandemic that we might see. He's going to walk out of the COVID inquiry, ask everyone how it's all looking with his MPs, and then whoever's got to give him the report on what his MPs have been saying, including, you know, the ERG, all these different various factions. It's going to be a bit of a difficult chat with the Prime Minister, isn't it? Well, when I spoke to the Prime Minister on Thursday when he appointed me, he was in good spirits, absolutely determined that we have got a job to do. I think he's got the clear plan when it comes to the legislation that we're debating tomorrow to get us to where we need to be to make this partnership a reality with Rwanda. This has gone on for long enough. It'll give us the powers to operationalise this in the way that I think the public expects us to deliver. He is really focused on that, as well as on the other areas of priority for the government, and he should be given all the backing in the world for that. You, um... It, Richard Sunak says it's not a confidence vote, but really, you know, if he can't get legislation through that he's put right at the centre of his premiership, it feels to me like, you know, that's the beginning of the end, really. I mean, I remember, you know, Theresa May in sort of the last days of her uh, premiership when she couldn't get that Brexit um, legislation through the House. That was when things started to fall apart for her. It feels a bit 2019. It doesn't feel like that to me. We've got a really good plan here. I hear from colleagues that they want action on this issue. Here is the answer to achieving exactly the progress that they want to see. When and you, uh, look, you we will remember, be, we I remember will be back engaging. in 2019, you know, you quit as vice chair to vote against the kind of Brexit deal. You were on the rebellious side then. What would you say to Conservative MPs on the rebellious side right now? At that point, I wasn't convinced that we'd got the right plan in order to deliver the objective of delivering our departure from the European Union in that's the way that, feel like that I wanted Rwanda. to that's see. Exactly what they but, feel but that's like why now. I would definitely encourage colleagues to engage with us over the course of the coming hours in advance of that vote tomorrow. We will continue to engage with them as we take this forward. The reality is that this deals with the issues that were raised by the Supreme Court, building on the treaty, closing off those areas um, for claims and for the frustration of the relocations in the way that we've seen previously. I don't, um, I just don't see the concerns um, being um, to the extent that we would not be able to achieve that objective. We've got a plan here that gets us to where we need to be and I think Conservative MPs should come around and back it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.